Welcome to an episode of Our Bodies Keepers, a podcast that offers a window into the lives and minds of those whom we entrust to keep our bodies well. I'm here with uh, my guest, a fellow partner in the health, wellness, fitness field, um, David Fairbanks of Lions Pride Wellness and Weightlifting in the downtown Cincinnati area. I'm going to pass the floor to him in a moment, let him introduce himself, let you guys know what he's all about. Uh, And then we're going to tackle some concepts uh, that we run into um, fairly commonly with uh, clients, especially working in the one-on-one field with the concept of no pain, no gain, um, the concept of not having time for a balanced um, strength training regime in order to combat uh, musculoskeletal dysfunction and um, just also the uh, overall challenges one may face when navigating uh, navigating the fitness field altogether and where they should go, who they should be working with, basically where do they need to be in respects to what their goals are for fitness in its various forms. So I'll let David take it away from here. All right, I appreciate that, Lamar. Uh, my name is David Fairbanks. I am a coach and owner at Lions Pride Weightlifting and Wellness. Uh, Lions Pride Weightlifting and Wellness is located in uh, downtown Cincinnati, the west end of downtown Cincinnati. Uh, we're going into our fifth year um, at LPW. I'm at this current space. Uh, I call it your one-stop shop for health and wellness. So I've taken more of a community approach uh, to what we like to offer um, for training experience. Uh, So we have a larger space and then it's broken down into sections uh, based on the type of training that you're trying to do. So um, we have a space set up in the back or two spaces set up in the back that are used um, more for personal training and uh, small group personal training. Um, I myself coach uh, Olympic weightlifting, um, which is my my preferred style of uh, small group training. And then I also, you know, like I said, have a, a personal training business that I, I've built out um, in the space as well. And then in the front room, uh, we have uh, Pal MMA and fitness. So Adam Powell uh, runs that space. He does jujitsu, um, like I said, MMA, kickboxing. Um, so just we have a, a, a few different people that that utilize the space in the, the space that I, I spoke about previously um, in the back that we use for personal training in small group. Um, I've got five other trainers uh, that utilize the space as well for personal training and in a couple of coaches that help me out um, for uh, Olympic weightlifting for that that group class. So we got a bunch of different people, uh, a lot of trainers uh, that get a chance to use the space, um, which you know, for me, I, I love the fact that it gives an opportunity for a, a lot of different people uh, to have an opportunity to utilize the space, which that's a big part of the community for me is not only the training aspect of it, but then, you know, as you're training, maybe you do, par- you know, spark up conversation with people and then, you know, whatever comes from that. So um, it's been a it's been a blessing to be able to do it. Um, it's something that I, I get an opportunity to do for a living now. Um, I, I didn't start off as a trainer. Um, I, I think I've always been a teacher uh, by trade. Um, I've, I've had a few different careers where, you know, that's always become like a part of something that I was doing. Um, so I think I've been a teacher for for a long time now. Um, but this this past four or five years that has been my my time that I spent you know, actually on my own doing, doing training, doing coaching, you know, as my, as my profession, as my, my way of, of earning an income. So yeah. it's been good. I'm, I'm grateful for it. It's led to me meeting people like you, um, which that was a big part of it. I, I just felt like I wanted to create a space where, you know, the things that we're going to talk about today, as far as what the training experience could be for people. Um, I just wanted to create a space that was my interpretation of that. And then if that was something that, you know, people felt like could be of service to them, I wanted them to have the opportunity to to have access to it and to utilize it. So, you know, that's been happening. Um, and it's, I hope that it's going to keep happening. We're going to do everything we can to have it keep happening and, and obviously to continue to try to maybe even have it keep happening better. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks, David. So, um and just to and just to kind of dig in a little bit to what you were saying before, just that that training space, finding out what exactly people should be doing, just kind of like according to their needs. It's kind of like how 
you know, currently in the nutrition world, you know, people are, you know, you grow up starting with that block of like the food pyramid and like, you know, here's what all you need in order to have a balanced, you know, nutritional life. And then, you know, once we study more, we start figuring out, oh, you know, like we're all kind of genetically different and we all need different forms of nutrition and balance based on how we're living, based on what's going on in our lives, what's going on in our genetics. And uh, that's kind of how I see you, it, like in the field. It's very you know, similar. What you're saying about nutrition, very similar to to training. Where, right. Like yeah. I think there were some things that we all might have been taught, or, or maybe not taught <laughs> at all. Right. But there were some things that we were taught, or that maybe were indoctrinated in us. That yeah. you know, you get to a point, and it's like there was an inkling back then that I didn't feel like that was it. But like I know for sure this ain't it now. Yeah. You know. And know so for sure. you're, you know, and that's down the road so then once you get to that point you look back and you don't even see you know where maybe even you were indoctrinated with that so it's like what do I do yeah you know and that and that maybe even you know starts the journey that you know that is what we're going to be having a conversation about today even yeah and and same like in my like field with like clinical massage it, it it's hard um David if you want to talk for a second about how difficult has it been and is it still difficult to kind of navigate through what people are like conditioned to believe about fitness in order for you? Like how hard is the process of trying to help them understand that they need to get out of that conditioned? This is the reason you train. This is this is what you should be looking for in training. And, uh, you know, how easy is it to to feed them? You know, that that new information about this is what we should be trying to attain. It. I'll say this. It's it's so difficult that I've stopped trying to make people understand. OK, <laughs> I, I feel you. On you know that what I mean? So yeah. I, I've stopped me. I've stopped trying to make people understand. And, you know, like I said, thankfully, because, you know, I am working in the space. Mm. I, I just try to go about it as, you know, let's try to set an example of what we feel like it should look like, you know, not saying that that's right or wrong. Yeah. Just saying, hey, we, we've done some things a certain way not saying that's wrong, but we've done some things a different way and that's felt better. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we're just shifting things this way and we're allowing it to have an opportunity to, to progress. Yeah. And I mean, that's beyond training. I think that's something maybe that just goes with, with life too. Like you don't really get good feedback from people if you know, you tell them everything they're doing is wrong first and yep. then tell them that what you're doing is right and they need to listen to you. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially, like, especially when you're about to ask people on top of that to pay you for ex what exactly right? <laughs> for what, yeah. what, what, what is what is right, what you're telling. Yeah. Them too, yeah. You know? So, you know, basically, you don't insult people you know, kind of in the space and then, you know, oh, I have something for you that you need to pay for, pay for yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, so you try to approach it with, you know, I guess there's that word empathy that comes up sometimes yeah. where, you know, I don't, I definitely haven't always been in the, the, the best or perfect space where I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be. I'm not doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now, but I'm doing my best. Yeah. And I feel like, because I'm trying to do my best and because as always, you know, my mindset, I can now see what the, oh, there's the progression from where I might have been in the past. And there's why there needed to be a progression there. I can see, you know, there's a different perspective on it based on what I'm doing now. Yeah. So it's just like, look, we know that people have these basic guidelines and, you know, guidelines come from evidence, right? We get evidence, we get results, we come up with core guidelines, but as we continue to progress, we get better evidence, which should result in better guidelines. <laughs> you, you, you said I, there are certain words that just like hit when people say them. And I'm like, I, I just love to stop, you know, mm -hmm. core. Yeah. Foundation. Yeah. You know that if, if we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of things. Well, yeah. so, yeah, there are whether you're talking about nutrition, whether you're talking about training, mm -hmm. there are some core foundational principles that yeah we all should should be you know at least some some versed on mm -hmm. if not well versed on depending on what your goals are yeah. in order to reach said goals yeah but know? a floor isn't four walls it and four walls ain't a roof 
<laughs> and it ain't and it yeah exactly it's not it's not everything in between it's either not everything so between. you know you create that core you create the foundation but then ideally you create it in a way where give it a chance to be whatever type of of model mm -hmm. of how she wanted to be exactly you know and yeah. it doesn't have to be that you know this model is any better than that model it exactly. it's your model it's so your it's, model. it's 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 great it's the one that you wanted so so let's talk about um what what is the purpose of being fit of being like just kind of physical health mm -hmm. uh, like what is the purpose of really challenging the body and you know are we seeing that purpose being taught or enforced like in the current fitness world so i'll start with what uh with being fit yeah i think of being fit you know i think about mental fitness mm -hmm. Uh, obviously physical fitness, mm -hmm. um, emotional fitness. Yeah. Um, and if you really want to get into it, even, even spiritual fitness, yeah. you know, so it's, it's kind of all encompassing where you're trying to do whatever you do in training. And then ideally, ultimately in life to just have things match up when and wherever you need it. Mm -hmm. Like you don't, you don't ever want to get to that proverbial spot where like, you need something from your body. You need something from your mind and you're realizing in real time you don't have it because usually those spots where you realize that like you really needed that. You don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't usually realize that and it's like, oh, dang, give me just a second. I'm going to go grab that uh -huh. and then I'll be right back. You usually yeah. realize it and like whatever you needed it for is like it's gone mm -hmm. as you're picking up. Dang. So being fit to me is is just having all of those things come together so that if and when your best is needed, you have it. Yeah. The best is needed from all of those four to come together, kind of like the, the superhero cartoons we used to watch. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just all comes together for you when you need it, yeah. you know? And then I think even that gives you a chance to kind of answer that that second question, are you really getting to it or are the, the professionals that are, are helping people you know, do training, is that, is, is that really, are we really getting to that? I think people are trying. Yeah. I think people are trying, yeah. uh, you know, I'll leave it. I always say, you know, let's leave it to the people that are, are, are experiencing our work to tell us. Yeah. And generally they'll tell us yeah. even if they're not telling us. Yeah. Cause if they're not telling us, yeah, they're telling you something. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I try to keep it judge free on that from that perspective. Cause you know, I haven't, I haven't trained with everybody. I don't know what everybody's perspective is. Yeah. And I, and I, I would like to think that, you know, just like myself, if you're getting into a profession like this, it's service based, mm -hmm. you know, if you're training people, that's service based. So I don't, I don't think you would wake up in the morning looking, looking to do harm to someone. Yeah. You know, so I think I think everybody has good intentions in mind, but it's just that process of how you set everything up. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's client feedback like for you right now? Like, um, do you feel like they uh, like as they get more as they start to grasp more of like what your style is and what you're trying to get them to understand? Do they do they sort of open up windows into those different areas of fitness? Are you able to like kind of get out of them where they are as far as like yeah. uh, emotional, mental, yeah, it's, spiritual um, fitness? I end up in a weird space a lot of time because like I get really good feedback from the people that are doing the work. Yeah. Like really, really good feedback from them. Like to that point where like, I don't know what it's like to f get those type of compliments, yeah. you know, cause it's, it's not only just a compliment on my work, but it's a, it's a compliment on their work. Yeah. And like, that's the best kind of compliment where it's like, okay, we came together and did something. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So yeah. I get that type of feedback. Um, but then I also have to fight a little bit of frustration sometimes because I know there's so many more people that could get a, even a little piece of that. Yeah. Even if it was just a little piece of it, you know, and that's even part of our overall conversation. Like what what is it to be fit? Well, yeah. you know, it has to be based on what it is that you're trying to do. So if what you're trying to do only requires you to take a little piece of it, take it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's still going to it's still going to hit the same way, yeah. you know. So it, it the, the feedback from clients has been tremendous. Um, 
it's something that gives me life a lot of days mm-hmm. because, you know, li- life is life. Things, life things are going on, yeah. you know. So you, again, one of the things that, that is grateful for me um, when life is life and I can go to a space and do work that I'm really passionate about. And it's, it's a bit of, it's a bit of therapy for me. It like balances things out. You know what I mean? To where I, I, I really am passionate about what I do. I, I, like I said, I get feedback mm. from, from my people where good feedback or, or amazing feedback doesn't always have to be them saying something good about me. Exactly. Like even those spaces where, you know, something has happened where we need to have some constructive criticism. Like I, I appreciate that too, because mm-hmm. there has to be a space and a relationship that, that was created in order for even the opportunity to present itself for that. Yeah. So I, I wanted to even, I, I kind of, I guess, organically got a space to clarify that where like, nah, I, it's not just people patting your back all the day, mm-hmm. all, all day. Although that does, that does feel great. Yeah. Um, It's just creating the space for, for, authenticity right you know and ideally life is good yeah. you know i am working hard i am i am putting myself in a certain space with what i do training wise where you know i'm pushing to a certain level so that everything in between from a life perspective is a little bit more balanced for me yeah you know so like two of the concepts i really want to just kind of tackle um today is the concept of and we talked about this um like earlier but the concept of having no time and also um, the concept of no pain, no gain. I feel like these are two of the things that I hear maybe the most frequently, like in the in the space of not just like fitness, but like because I do like a I, I do clinical massage and like strength recovery program. Mm-hmm. So like even with uh, like tackling musculoskeletal dysfunction on the massage end, I hear this. And I know, like, as a trainer, you also hear this concept, too. When we make recommendations or when we try to set people up for success and they are always asking, what should I do? How long should I do it? When do we need to do this? And we give them our honest, you know, expert, you know, expertise backed, experience backed opinion. And they resist with this concept of having no time. Yeah. Right. So, like, what what's what's the no time? For, first of all, if you want to begin with, like, is that something that your like with your people is this something is this a wall that you're also helping people cross i think it is a wall that i help people cross um i think because i just try to start off what i want to do with people from a training perspective just like meeting them where they are Mm -hmm. so if i'm meeting you where you are you're coming off the couch yeah so what i'm asking you to do is just get off the couch a little bit more than you already were yeah let's start there so From that standpoint, if you're telling me you don't have time to do that, like you're not ready to do the work that we're trying to do here yet. Yeah. It's plain and simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, usually there's conversation that happens in between because if that person has already gotten up off the couch or whatever getting up off the couch mm-hmm. looks like where maybe that's contacting me. Yeah. You know, via via email, via call, whatever that looks like, that's a proverbial getting off the couch. Yeah. So of course, as a trainer, I'm going to I'm going to push for more. Exactly. I'm going to push for more. Now, what that looks like, hey, come down and see me. Come down and see the space. Mm-hmm. OK, you made it down to see the space. Now, I got a pretty good bad and average if I can get people down to see the facility. Yeah. OK, just one session a week with me. Mm-hmm. You know, one session a week. OK, if I can get one session with you, I'm going to get you thinking about this a little bit more outside of, of that one session. Yeah. OK, so get up a little bit more each of those days that we're out of here because I've given you some stuff that you got to work on, mm-hmm. even if it's OK, you can't really get up. Well, lift the leg up and let's do some let's do some ankle cars. Yeah. Let's do some ankle rotations. Yeah. You know, and let and, and make sure hey, I need I need five sets of those every day until mm-hmm. I see you next week. Yeah. And then maybe the, prog- Hey, did you do it? Mm-hmm. Nah, I didn't get, to, I actually got to it two days. Okay. Two days is good. Let's keep going. Let's try to get to it all five days. Yeah. You know, and then maybe we get to it all five. Well, Hey, let's stand them up this time. Yeah. And maybe that's something we worked on in the session. And so now there was a progression that that person saw and it's like, well, yep. Yes. If you do, if you move, if you do some work, yeah, 
here we are. Yeah. So it's, I think it's setting it up progressively for people where yeah. that's why, you know, some of the initial stuff we talked about were like, hey, what is your actual goal? Right. Did we even ask that? Exactly. Like sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, the feedback, some of the, the greatest feedback that I end up getting from clients is feedback that they 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 give sometimes based on experiences that they that they've had before. Yeah. Where it's like, OK, I don't want anybody to talk about me like that. Mm hmm. Or like I might have an unsavory experience with a client and they might have something to say one way or the other. But, OK, not on the training stuff like that, where yeah. like that just seems like you, you didn't even ask about their goals. Yeah. So how, how would you even know to get them to their goals? Yeah. So stuff like that, that you get a chance to take in where it's like, OK, I'm taking that in as I want to make sure that I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like it's. For me, I'm, it's just like two. It's like two different war th theater fronts here. Where there is, um, it, on one side, exactly what you're talking about, goals, uh, trying to help people understand where they can kind of ease out the time uh, to, to face ease this concept. Ease out the time. Don't go ease to the extreme. The yeah, like ease out the time to face the fact that, you know what? This is where you are. This is where you are. You actually can you're not manifesting extra time here. That's the toughest, easiest part for people yeah. is, you know, this is where you like sometimes in session uh -huh. you and, and all right, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I purposely set people up to, f yeah. to figure this out. Yeah. But sometimes purposely it's in something like, hey, stand on one leg. Yeah. And you see that you see that pause before yeah. they go to do it because they're realizing their their feet are too wide. Uh huh. And it's like, well, I know I'm not supposed to lean that. And you're, you're seeing all mm -hmm. that stuff happen. It's like, hey, it's, you know, you kind of give them that that hand on the on the shoulder, where it's a, whether it's an actual hand on the shoulder or whether yeah. it's just a, hey, this is this is where we are. Mm -hmm. This is why we need to do some of this stuff that we're already working through here. It's always amazing to see people transition from when they when they meet that realization point where they are not a single block. And they are actually constructed of many moving joints. Mm -hmm. And they begin to see themselves as many moving pieces together instead of being that one single dense trauma built singular block. If if there was one thing that is just a, a, a misconception, that's probably the biggest. Yeah. That there are just misses in training in, in the in in the coaches and in, in the people that get to do the training for others, there yeah. there are misses sometimes, mm -hmm. in just allowing people to just muscle 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 rah rah like that yeah. that type of approach yeah. that it's it's building something that you don't want yeah it's building something that you don't want where it is the body all together but it's in this kind of restricted and inflamed way and from that point. And, and bringing it back to their relation to time, I feel the clients are also seeing their time this way too. As one, uh, the, the commitments that they have and the things that they're doing in their life is just one brick of their entire day. Yeah. And they're not seeing that all of these things are in parts. Yeah. And they can be manipulated. They can be built upon, they can be let go of, they can be exchanged mm -hmm. for the type of fitness, for the type of training, and any of those areas we talk about being fit can be. And that brings me to this other side, where the other war theater is, uh, and I know this is the same with you too, we get clients who say they have no time, and on the surface, they're actually correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't have time. Yeah. And it's because their life is so jam packed with commitments. And I don't mean like all 100 percent necessary commitments either, because I'm talking about this condition where they need to have their life jam packed. And because they're trying to gain better health, they need to keep stuffing things in here. Mm -hmm. You know, this condition where whether you want to talk, you know, philosophy about um you know, the, the workforce or where we are as far as like work life balance, a, you know, work life with like kids and home upkeep and all of these different commitments that we can't exactly just up and step away from mm -hmm. for the pursuit of, you know, fitness. Mm -hmm. 
but helping them to understand where they can, again, ease in the time and where that time, where that easing in of time can grow and how they can begin to take the, the pieces of uh, their commitments without losing any of the commitments they're in, being able to take pieces of time out of that in order to put themselves as a greater piece of their of the time pie, mm-hmm. like throughout the day, mm-hmm. and um, helping people to understand that way of battling the concept of I have no time, you know, because a lot of the time, and I'm I'm gonna pick on I'm gonna pick on um, moms here for a mm-hmm. second, um, in particular, like working moms. They're, they're first of all. They're superheroes, right? They have, Absolutely. They have, yeah, it, it, it is tough managing a household, even if you have a partner. It is tough managing a household. It is tough being a parent. Um, but helping them to understand the concept that they, too, are a member of their family. Mm-hmm. And so they also need to, with the same, with the same rigor that they're uh, enforcing the best conditions for their partners, for their children— they also need to do that for themselves. And it, and they need to start asking the rest of their household, or in, in, if it's not their household, other commitments, they need to start learning how to rely on the other people or things or systems that are relying on them. They need reciprocity so that they can have the time to do these kinds of things that we're trying to help them move through. It is a situation where, <clears throat> excuse me, where you have to lead by example. Mm. And there, there are sacrifices that have within a family structure, especially Mm -hmm. there are sacrifices that then have to be made. But especially when it comes to, you know, fitness, like we're talking about either we want to, we want to make a calculated sacrifice now, Mm -hmm. or there is a sacrifice that you're going to make down the road, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's something where, you know, you're trying to meet people wherever they are. You do try to give them like, Hey, really think about this. Like if we're not, work life is working in a cycle for Mm -hmm. us so if it's not a regenerative cycle with the training and with how we decide to live life it's degenerative exactly and the way we do our patterns we're degenerating way faster than our parents Mm -hmm. and our grandparents yes so you know so you know we got you know you got people coming with with lower back pain like debilitating lower back pain and they barely 30 if 30 barely 30 i have uh, my 50 plus my 50 plus clients and if i if i did 50 plus clients and then 50 below right clients in age the 50 plus clients collectively are in better shape have better health and have a better mindset mm-hmm. than the the below 50 mm-hmm. like clients mm-hmm. so yeah it, it it definitely is something that you know needs to be studied so and i think that that I talked about like back pain real Mm -hmm. quick. And there was another part of that, that you had asked me with no pain, no gain. Yeah. So as you get into the levels of your training or lack thereof, wherever, wherever you're at, depending on what it is that you're, that you're wanting to do goal wise, Mm -hmm. regardless of the goal, you, you've got to be the whole reason for doing training is to, at some point overstress or overexert the body to teach it how to adapt to said yes. stress. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even within that, that's another, like, Hey, have we, are you even, have we even talked about that? So exactly. that as we get to these certain spots, you understand what we're trying to get at, get at again, yeah. if we haven't, how are, how are people supposed to know what the, what the, what the, what the yelling is or what the, you know, all of that other the stuff very is. The first thing I tell people before we begin a massage is that pain is a language. Mm-hmm. It is not something that, you know, it is not something that you are supposed to endure in high volumes for no reason. And it's also not something that you need to hide away from. And this one, I'm picking on the men here who come in for clinical work. You need to be honest with what you are feeling. If yeah. it's over a seven on your threshold, you need to let me know. Yeah. Because how the body responds is going to dictate how well I am able to help you recover, how well we're able to change the environment and the kinetic chain. And I know that translates to uh, Olympic weightlifting as well. Is Are we having the conversation of the forms of pain and what 
that what the different languages of pain are trying to tell us about how we move or you know the type of feedback that we're getting and where we are as far as dysfunction where we are as far as strength so especially when i get a chance to work with my one-on-one clients yeah you know i, I call the training that i do uh, mobility movement and mental training yeah so you know the mobility piece sets the foundation uh the movement piece you know, gives me a chance to just work whatever I need to training and movement wise to fit whatever the, the the client's goals are. And then the mental work is just all encompassing where once they put the mobility and the movement together, you can train the mental mm-hmm. in real time. So a lot of times I'm working the mobility work with people and, you know, automatically as you try to as you do try to get on one leg and and oh, that's actually my ankle. That's like you just you start feeling things out as they're working currently and Mm -hmm. then ultimately how they should be working in real time. That's already changed the mindset because you're feeling out how it's working currently, how it should be working. And you're feeling out that there's some space in between for improvement. Mm -hmm. And you're also feeling that out in terms of all I did was lift my leg up properly, you know, with, with a little bit more tension and actually give specific intention to move in the ankle joint Mm -hmm. so that it gets a chance to function the way that it needs to function. And then maybe even the feet and the toes get to function the way that they need to function. And then what does that do to change the feedback up the chain? So it's like, you're getting a chance to talk people through that stuff. And again, that can be why training is so important because if you're not generally the patterns are just setting themselves up, like we said, for dysfunction and degeneration. So, Maybe at some point you feel the pain as that's happening. Yeah. At some point, the pain gets so unbearable, you start not feeling it mm-hmm. and probably even maybe start doing other things besides training to make yourself not not feel said pain, which now we're going the complete opposite way of what we've talked about with yeah. uh, what you talked about with massage. Hey, if it's a certain level of pain, we got to come off of that a little bit. We're not we're actually get, we're damaging stuff now. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if it's if it's a certain level of pain, actually, we need we based on what we've done to the body, we're where we need to be. Yeah. I, we I need you to I need you to work through this a certain way. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's 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 that chance that we get in real time then to 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 help people understand what it is that we're actually trying to to utilize the message of pain to tell us. Yeah, we're not no pain, no gain. Yeah. Unless I've put myself through some sorts of discomfort, which, okay, now in order to get back and then gain, I've got I've got to go through some type of discomfort Mm -hmm. or maybe ultimately some type of pain. I've got to understand the I've got to build a certain relationship with that now based on what my experience has been. That's why it's. That's why all of this is so important so that ideally we just give ourselves the best chance in real time to to choose what that experience is going to be. Yeah. So like these concepts are when clients are struggling with either of these uh, two concepts, concept having no like no time or um, as far as understanding pain as a language, um, that kind of brings me to should people who are looking for fitness in whatever form You know, should they be looking for one on one training? Should should that be the foundation for everyone? So to make sure that they're going into their, you know, whatever field of training they're going into, should they be looking for one on one things first in order to avoid, you know, falling into the wrong patterns of doing things like as opposed to these big um, like uh, typical things like like large hit uh, classes, boot camps, CrossFit. Orange theories, Pilates, you know, things where the coach has, you know, 15, 20, 30 people in a single room and they've got, you know, a standard or maybe even a specialized kind of training like workout. But it's not even if they have the type of knowledge that we have, it's not possible to do that with 30 people. Right. And you it's very easy for for to not get the type of communication that would lead you to having these important conversations with the client. So do you think that people who are just starting out? really should be seeking one-on-one attention before they start to go into these group sessions. People that are starting out absolutely 100% will ultimately get a better training experience and and more longevity with what they want to do from yeah. a training experience 
starting with somebody one on one, setting a foundation for what you want to do with the mobility work to understand how your body moves and then ultimately giving yourself a chance in real time. You know, maybe it is Orange Theory now. Maybe it's CrossFit here or maybe it's Olympic weightlifting. Like what people are going to do whatever they want to do training wise anyway. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I'm not I'm not here. I'm not here to bash anything that people want to do. <clears throat> I know, I, and I, I did CrossFit for probably six or seven years. Mm-hmm. So I know one of CrossFit's foundational things is they do a sort of on-ramp class, mm-hmm. which is supposed to, because there are so many different movements that you hit yeah. with within a, you know, a CrossFit workout or within a week of CrossFit programming. Yeah. So they do at least do that part of, you know, on-ramping and then, and it's been a while since I've been in a CrossFit space, but I know most gyms end up setting up some sort of continuous education type training where, yeah. you know, just from a, a business model perspective, setting up personal training uh, opportunities. Um, some gyms get into setting up barbell clubs, having Olympic weightlifting clubs, which mm. I personally, if it's a CrossFit gym and an Olympic weight or, or CrossFit gym um, that doesn't have an Olympic weightlifting gym, I think that's a little bit of a miss there. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have somebody that is doing from a coaching perspective, those two main lifts that are highly technical, if you don't have somebody that is really concentrated on what the aspects of those two lifts are, I I do think that there, there can be a miss there. That's something that I can, that's something that I can speak to personally, just because that was really a lot of the reasoning behind uh, why I wanted to start um, you know, my gym and have the, I personally have a passion for Olympic weightlifting. So mm-hmm. there was a natural trans, trans, uh, um, transition that happened for me, um, just from CrossFit to Olympic weightlifting. But as I made that transition, even I just got an opportunity to understand a little bit more about what the snatch and the clean and jerk actually are and what I'm actually doing to, to my body. And so, at that level, as you start learning more and more about it, it's like, OK, not only what am I doing to myself, but then if I'm if I'm doing this as a profession, what am I ultimately going to be doing to other people? You know what I mean? So exactly. it, it really just gives you a chance to keep keep setting things the way that they should be. Where first and foremost, like we want to keep people safe and we want to make sure they're as healthy as possible yeah. for for day to day life, mm-hmm. for the lifestyle that they want to live day to day. Now, again, let people figure out what that what that looks like based on how much they're willing to give. If you're the competitive person that, you know, for example, with the Olympic weightlifting piece of it, you want to compete and take that to a certain level where there's going to be certain things that are required from you as a coach. There's going to be certain things that you got to require from yourself as an athlete. And that that in itself is the cool part of training, because now in real time, I'm I'm not if I'm telling you something I'm not telling you something you don't already know, mm-hmm. and generally I don't have to tell you anything yeah. because this is this is your goals I'm I'm doing whatever my goals are I do that on on my time mm-hmm. so it just again the training process it just it gives you a chance to check in with things in real time um, taking an opportunity to check in with somebody uh, from a one on one perspective it just gives you a chance to build that confidence in whatever you're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of times when I get people that come to me that have, you know, some experience in it, that will be some of the feedback that I get. We're like, man, I've done this stuff. I've got an older, older client um, that comes in. I'll say he's been training on his own probably close to 30 years. Okay. You know, doing some sort of training, yeah. Um, bar, whether it be barbells, dumbbells, calisthenic type work, um, and in good shape, in good shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but over time, with some things that have happened with life, having to have some surgeries, mm-hmm. just having more of an active lifestyle with the type of work that he does, mm-hmm. things happen. Yeah. And so it, it's been we've been training together now. I think over two years. Mm-hmm. And so. Even with him having the background, bench press, squats, like some of the stuff that we still do, he's still finding new and ultimately better movement patterns for himself. Yeah. And so that can even be that that thing of just getting an extra set of eyes on, on you, mm-hmm. you know, beyond the information, ideally, that you're able to get 
from that coach or that trainer that, you know, is working to to be, you know, at some points have some sort of mastery over what it is that they're doing, where ideally they do have something to tell you as the client that you don't know. Yeah. Now, once they give you that information is giving you a chance to maybe even refine that work that you do on your own. Yeah. You know, and again, that's where now. OK, like we said, you set you set whatever it is you want to do based on what what the work is that you put in, you know, and then I'll I'll act as the guy to just help you progress along the way. And let's mm. see where we get to. Um, sometimes uh, every now and then I, some people will come in and I'll I'll work with them through like clinical work we'll be working on dysfunction and then um they'll pop this question up is xyz style of training good for me you know i do this every day i do this you know x amount of times a week is i do like yoga as an example mm -hmm. right because that's one i hear most most commonly mm -hmm. is with yoga and so i'll have someone who will have um they will have like uh, over lengthened mm -hmm. um very tense, taut, like muscle, it's strained. And uh, with, with over lengthened muscle, when you ask it to do work, you know, under strenuous conditions, that you exponentially increase the chances of you straining it, right? Having yep. damage. Yep. And so they go, well, you know, I've been doing yoga, you know, is this, is, is this good for me right now? And then, you know, I have to have a, the conversation about how yoga requires quite a bit of strength, mm -hmm. <laughs> actually, you know, mm -hmm. sure, it's it's a mobility thing, it's a postural correction thing, you know, it's a, it's a lengthening thing, but it also is challenging you to hold positions where you may not have the healthiest kinetic chain mm -hmm. in that or multiple areas. Mm -hmm. In you're order already to, holding positions you are, before you go to hold, you are, before yeah. you go to hold that next you're position, you already hold one. That you, <laughs> and so, you know, um, how are you, um, uh, what's your experience like with having to tell your clients that they can't do something that they feverishly you know want to do they come in with this mentality where they are trying to like you know boom 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 they think that the more that they put in they're going to reach this goal faster they're trying to blow through all of these necessary steps to build a solid foundation are you experiencing that i'm not experiencing that at the moment yeah um, but I have experienced that in the past. Yeah. And so um, with some of the athletes that I get a chance to work with, yeah, there can just be this, this thing where go, 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 go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, hey, there, there's, this is a reps game, mm -hmm. you know, and we can't get all those reps in today or this week, mm -hmm. even at the pace that you want to go. Right. So regardless, let's, let's slow it down mm -hmm. a bit, you know, and that's, like I said, it's gotten better and better over time because, mm -hmm. you know, just over time, even, even the client base will regenerate a little bit because yeah. the messages like that, where if you're not listening, most of the time, you're probably going to end up injured in some way, Yeah. you know, and then what that ultimately does to kind of stop whatever the process might be or stop whatever the routine might be mm. and then what that adds to the work that is already work yeah to then let me do what we were supposed to be doing anyway yeah let me do that and then get back to what I was doing which like we said is probably going to have to change a little bit too but it, it's, it's created more work on top of the work that was already there and yeah. we've already had the conversation about people feeling like they already don't have time yeah. to do the work. And this, and this whole art to um, the concept of doing nothing. I think with like in strength recovery, um, I'm like typically working with people who are so used to being able to utilize their body in the ways that, that, are, that they need to, mm -hmm. right? They're used to being able to go, go, go. They're mm -hmm. used to being able to stack things. Like you're saying, I, I know the struggle happens with athletes who are used to being able to put their body through abuse and they're trying to charge their way like they would meet any other obstacle mm -hmm. previously to an injury that they've had. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when, when we're doing strength recovery, the most important thing is, uh, like one of the most important things is the rest time. Yeah. And what I'm finding, and this is, you know, I'm taking a shot at the type A clients right now, is that they can't sit for three minutes and do nothing. Yeah. It is the most aggravating thing yeah. in the world. And I think that lends to uh, a portion of what you were talking about with mental 
fitness and mental fitness of not just being able to stand like mental abuse and strain and feedback from the body, mm -hmm. but also being able to cope with the time it takes for your body to decompress and having to accept the amount of time it takes for your body to recover. So we like to give a timing, give the timing of it perspective mm. <clears throat> in real time with an experience that you've had. So yeah. you came in and did some work with me yes. a couple of weeks ago. Yes. We did, you remember scapular cars. That's right. And I put the hand weights in your hands. Yeah. And so because you understand your body, I watched you stand still, mm. but move a lot. Yes. And so at one point I was just like, okay, you got to go, go, do, go ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I just let you, I just let you be for about 20, 30 seconds because yeah. it had already given you the feedback that I needed it to give you. And then even where that was, that would fit in from a time perspective. Yeah. What is 40 seconds to stand mm -hmm. and let that, let that settle. Yeah. You and know, let me tell you, it's, it was brutal. I, I'm coaching people through trying to wait three minutes so that they can get a proper amount of blood oxygen to the kinetic. It's not enough to just catch your breath. You need blood oxygen to return to, to the body. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm holding these weights down at, down at David's gym. I'm holding these hand weights in my, these like egg type weights in my hand. And two and a half pounds. Just, <laughs> just slowly <laughs> running through these, this car's mobility, like scapular. I, I, as, as someone who studies like kinesia, I, I understand what he is trying to get me to translate to my body. And I'm slowly working through these movements. Let me tell you, it was brutal. And it just, it just lends to the fact of like, what well, we're talking about core and building that house and building that roof, you know, according to like the body's needs. If I'm training to, he's helping me understand the snatch. If I do not focus on the core principles of scapular movement, I am never going to get the snatch down. Mm -hmm. It is never going to happen. Well, and, the, and one thing that I have to talk into what, you know, my approach has ultimately become, mm. although it is something that's highly technical, um, it can be really difficult to learn without the right mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm never trying to make it something that it feels like it's unattainable for people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what the what the mobility work what the car system uh what that joint stabilization program had, had our joint mobility program has given me an opportunity to do is kind of use the mobility piece of it to just help them feel through what could be you know to help them what is and what could be mm -hmm. you know what i mean because by the time we get to the overhead squat for example mm -hmm. Ah, uh, that's I'm I'm not I'm gonna feel like I can't do it yeah. if I'm getting there and right when that weight goes overhead mm -hmm. and I try to break at the hip and knee to get into the overhead squat and I feel my shoulders cave on me uh -huh. and I feel that bar go forward and I and I just shrug my shoulder. Now I got all of that that I have to try to work back through yeah. as far as well what what should we actually be doing in this movement? Yeah. But. If we've done a little bit of work to say, hey, here's currently what's going on through the shoulders and the scaps. Yeah. Here's what could and should be going on through there, because as we put the pieces of the puzzle together, this is what you need. Yeah. So it gets people thinking about it from that perspective. And then even ultimately, by the time they progress to whether it's the overhead squat or even the snatch. Yeah. OK, that actually means something to me as far as what the parts are that I'm using and then how those parts come together as a whole. Yeah. To get me something that has a chance to, you know, be really dynamic as a movement. Yeah. And then what that creates as space in between now, because I did some mobility yeah. to get myself there. I did some dynamic to get dynamic movement to get myself there. And then. Now, how can life function in between? Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I get clients who want to do these Olympic movements. You know, and um, or just just movement patterns in general that their life demands, be it from their occupation, sleep, uh, lounging and then their daily activities. I put them through an Osla intake. But as soon as they come in, I say, you know, let's find out what the body likes mm -hmm. and let's find out what it doesn't like. Mm -hmm. You know, turning left, you know, turning right. Can you, you know, palms out? Are you in the pain arc? Mm -hmm. You know, can you get over, can you, can you elevate the shoulder 170 degrees before you feel any discomfort, mm -hmm. resistance, strain, anything like that? And I get people who are looking to do the type of challenges that you want to put their bodies through. 
you know, safely and in a managed order, like even with the cars, mobility. And they're like sub ready, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. uh, below mm -hmm. ready because they need to get through these dysfunctions and free these areas up so they can even begin to start to train this, this inner working uh, mobility. And um, so just let's, let's talk a little about how, about how, uh, how clients are working through the realization that they don't know how to use their body. Mm -hmm. So when I talk into the, the Olympic weightlifting side of it, as a style of training, I talk about that from the standpoint of because those movements are so high level, it just gives me a chance to spit out a, a, a dynamic receipt right away yeah. at either, oh man, it's together. Yeah. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and even there's a humility in how it's together. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not the six hundred pound deadlift. Mm -hmm. Although if it's a certain weight, like they're there's a little bit that might come out of there, but it, yeah. it, it comes out in a certain way because it has to be together a certain way yeah. for those movements to go. So yeah. it's the movements end up just being a representation of all of the work that you do below exactly. it. And then that's even where, you know, whether it's a, a personal training client or whether it's somebody that's that's in the group. Mm -hmm. That's why that mobility work is so important. That's why the accessory work around those two movements that is pretty similar to what mostly anybody does in the gym in some way shape or form with the different you know all, we're all trying to hit specific muscle groups we're all trying to get a specific stimulus but then ideally we're also trying to put all of those pieces back together and 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 to be able to test them in some type of compound way mm -hmm. you know so that's why you'll still see a lot of people you know let me get in the the, the back squats or the front squats you know yeah. let me get some things that you know, re the deadlifts. Let me really do something that either the body is set up to take that on or I get that that clear distinction that it's not. Yeah. You know, so I try to use it from that standpoint. And again, I try to just let people tell me in real time what it is that they want to do, mm -hmm. where if you're if you're looking at that and saying that you want to do it. But when I ask you about your mobility work, especially based on if it's now mobility work that I've said, hey, we need to do this mm -hmm. if you want to do that. And I ask you about it and it's not getting done. Yeah. Now, I still might let you go over there and try it. But when you try it, like th at that point, it can only be what it can be. Yeah. You know, and then at some points there, there's there's there, we can't go any further. Yeah. You know. And that's that's one of the reasons I like uh, the snatch and the clean and jerk because yeah. it 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 really has a, a way of keeping you honest, mm -hmm. you know, to where you're not gonna put any more on there than you're than you're supposed to have, and if you do, you you you'll do it once and you won't do it again, yeah, you know, and then as you do progress, that weight that you do, that movement that you put together there's a certain way that you get a chance to feel about that because it, it's taking you through a certain range of motion. Yeah. You know, it's taking all of those, those joints through a certain range of motion and either it's set up or it's not, or it's not, <laughs> or it's not, you know, or and it's if not. it's not, okay, it's close to it. And okay. I see, I, let me get back on the mobility. Let me, let me add a little accessory here or there to get that together. And yep. then of course, when it is, Ah, there's that there's that that internal rotation I need at the hip there. there yeah. Okay, there. Okay, we good to go. And you get yeah. that confirmation. Getting the confirmation one way or the other, yeah. so that we just know what we're dealing with in real time. And then again, it's up to you what you want to do with it. Ideally, hope you want to do something. <laughs> you doing <laughs> you doing something one way or the other. You know, <laughs> you doing something one way or another. Since we spoke about it uh, a little bit, I, I I told you that I wanted to get uh, a little bit of feedback from you yeah. on your on your session that you had. Oh yeah, because that's something. So for me, and I think for you too, this is part of why the podcast uh, yeah. came together. It's the extremes where yeah. like 
I'll get the people that want to train, but like, I'm a size, I'm a smash. Like, I don't, like, <laughs> like, like, I don't need that, you know? Like, yeah. they, like, and it's like, nah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's all part of recovery. Or you'll yeah. get people, like you say, that, you know, they want to do the massage. But yeah, like but they don't want to they don't want to take it to that that next level to actually put some put some work behind it. Yeah. So like on my end, that uh, and I'll 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 do a little short snippet on just my I'll pick on my hypermobile clients, right? Mm-hmm. Clients hypermobility, um, excess laxity in the joints. Um, it's a little more difficult to them, uh, depending on how you know the level of um, excess hypermobility. It's uh, harder for them to get contractile strength out of the muscle. You know, they've probably spent decades at this point because normally I get them between like 35 and 50. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, you know, normally they've been in um, um, dysfunctional positions, whether it be like work, sleep, you know, activity, for you know, balance. Yeah. Um, they have delayed uh, their, their joint receptors. Um, type two, I believe the type two receptor has a more of a delayed response in speaking to the brain. So they can be out of position for a lot longer, building a lot more tension and then suffering the consequences a lot later and and not really knowing where these things are coming from. Right. So, uh, I'm picking on them because with clinical massage, I can bring your inflammation down. I can bring your range of motion up. Right. That's, you know, I can talk for days and days about the, about what clinical massage can do. But at the end of the day, Long story short, I have reduced your inflammation. I have increased your range of motion, right? I've changed the environment of the kinetic chain. However, almost every form of dysfunction comes from micro trauma over time, right? Unless you impact trauma, right? You got to a car accident or something like that, or you, you, fall, you fell or something like that. Even if you fall, you've set up an environment for you to be able to take a fall, right? So how do we combat micro trauma? Well, you have to recover what was lost, which is the little bit of strength day to day throughout, your, you know, the biomechanics, orthokinematics or of maintain, your lifestyle. Or, or, or put maintain, yourself in the space to yeah, maintain strength. Or put yourself in the maintain. So I tell people, you know, the goal for my practice is to be able to get you into a position where you can withstand the demands that you put on your body each day. Whether that be 40 to 60 hours at a desk or 40 hours at a desk and training, you know. Uh, or you know, 40 hours at a desk and your daily life activities, whatever that may be, gardening, you know, you know, taking care of the house, driving kids, you know, to and from a place, whatever. At the end of the day, if you want to prevent dysfunction from happening, arresting and reversing is not enough. Prevention takes strength training. It always comes back to this, and the hypermobile clients have it the worst because it is it is you cannot just train in the same vein as other people, right? Your body's different. Your thresholds are different. Things are different. But back to the the original point, resisting this element is, uh, is, is where the extreme is on my end, where, uh, they would rather continue paying for it, you know, the hard way, which is to get, to have to get body work done, uh, the hard way, one, two times a week, you know, once a week for four weeks, you know, every other week for the rest of your career, as long as you're sustaining this kind of damage. But the battle against micro trauma is always a losing one. Always. I don't if care if you're, getting, if you're just volleying yeah, back and forth. I don't there. care if you're getting massage every day. Why? Because dege- degenerative de- disease comes for us all. There's a pattern that's degenerative. Yeah. Degenerative patterns and the natural degenerative process of your skeletal tissue comes for us all. You cannot stop this. You can mitigate it. 